much better. Um, to executed the game plan really well. I thought Jordan, that was, you know, honestly, that's the best game I've seen a pitch. I've seen a Ranger uniform, and that was exactly what he set out. To do. We needed that. We needed that from a, you know, obviously from a win stand standpoint, you know, as a team, but also just from a uh, set the tone mentality, you know, from the pitching staff. And it's like, here we go. You know, he went right after these guys with all his pitches. Um, you could see just the, the conviction he had in, the, in his pitches and the confidence he was showing out there. Um, was able to just continually attack the strike zone with the stuff, man, and you know, got these guys off balance. A lot of weak contact, a bunch of punch outs. Um, and honestly, it was just that that late homer, you know, maybe one mistake. But, but other than that, he was pretty flawless. Do you at what point or do you consider just making him a you know more of a traditional starter and removing that kind of tandem label? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that that's been my thought all along with him. Obviously, um, you know, and I think. You know, after, you know, he things didn't go the way he wanted last year, but, you know, he's been a traditional starter his whole career. So he's one guy that I've said, we don't have limits on him. So, you know, if he goes out and has outings like that, it makes it pretty easy at some point to just say, okay, we're going to let you go as long as you go. Um, uh, but yes, I mean, that's obviously the idea behind with him was to get him some confidence, put him in positions where he can succeed. Um, it, you know, but obviously if he pitches like that, it makes it pretty easy for all of us to just let him go. Offensively, the at-bat quality remains pretty top to bottom. You know, I would say pretty good. I mean, my opinion, I don't know if that matters, but what are yeah. you seeing from an offensive standpoint um, that's encouraging after one series? Yeah, no, it was great. We, we stuck with it the whole time. And, and I think that there's so much buy-in on the offensive side, you know, from a man-to-man that they trust each other, that they're going to do that. And listen, we're going to have at bats where we don't, and you know, but they, when they do have those at bats, they talk about it after and they're frustrated by letting, you know, not letting their teammate down, but not living up to the standard that we've kind of set. And it baseball's hard, like hitting is hard. Um, but when, when to a man, they can trust each other, that they're going to constantly grind. And you look at that inning, we scored three the second, the second time it started with a strikeout. And then, a, you know, I don't know, seven or eight pitch walk by Brock. And then another walk by Jonah, you know, three, two count. We're starting to runner. There's, you know, he's fouling off pitches and then he ends up working a walk. Um, and then Tavares comes up, battles, 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 gets a three, two walk. So three straight walks that, you know, each had eight or nine pitches. That, that's what we're talking about. When we talk about being gritty and, 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 you know, grindy in the batter's box, like we're not giving in. And I think that, you know, it was a big at bat for Leo. That was probably the biggest at bat of the game right there. You know, it kind of allowed us to extend our lead and, um, you know, Kiner hits a, a ground ball in the six hole. We score two runs, another ball sack fly. And all of a sudden we're up six, nothing only because of the grit of our team, not because of somebody hitting a double or a homer. Or, and it was just being patient and saying, you know what, we're going to make you throw the ball over home plate. And if you don't, we're going to battle you. And, and that's, we have to continue to do that over and over every day. And like I said, we have the personnel that, that has bought into that. They love it. I mean, they're, they're, everybody was so happy for Leo and that at bat. To just, you know, I know he's had some struggles, but everybody was supporting him through that at bat, and they realized how big of an at bat that was for our team. Thanks, Woody. Evan. Hey, you kind of you kind of said this, but I'd almost say that no free bases is as is as much of a win as a win here. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, listen, Jordan, no walks, eight punch outs, you know, Benjamin, no walks, three, you know, Kennedy, you know, no walks, three punch outs. It's, it's a good recipe for success. You know, and I think that, you know, balls put in play, they're going to find gloves every once in a while, even if they're hit hard, you know, when, when that ball finds the, the catcher's glove for a ball for it, you can't defend that. And I know that they're going to happen. Um, walks are going to happen. It's part of the game, but the more we can limit that and, and put the pressure on that opposing offense to get them on their heels a little bit, more of an advantage we have um, and it allows our defense to be on their toes. You know, they're expecting the ball. Look at the tempo that, that Jordan and Benjamin had and even Kennedy at the end there, you know, all our defense was ready because they're getting the ball and throwing it, you know, and they're throwing it in the strike zone in our hitter, our defense is expecting the ball to be hit. Um, it's a huge advantage for us um, as a team. Um, <clears throat> the, the other part too, for me is the, the third and fourth innings when you do score runs as you had, the previous two games, you do come back out and you have relatively quick innings. In one case, super quick inning. That there's some there's some significance to that too. Hundred percent. That's I mean we talk about that at length. 
you know, the first three spot we score after Nate hits the homer, you know, Jonah's going out there and I said, this is the biggest inning of the year right here. Like we need a zero. And, you know, Jordan goes out and gets the zero and then we score three more, another huge zero, you know, six pitch inning gets our offense right back. And it's just, it deflates that other team. And I think that, you know, after the three spot, it was like the first pitch strike, you know, just puts that offense on their heels. A lot of times you, you know, three spot. And I think it was uh, Perez actually swung first pitch and got out, you know, after a three, after the second three spot, I was like, perfect. All right, here we go. we got one out already. You know, on the other side, it's, it's really difficult to maintain your game plan when you're on your heels. We, we've been there. Like we, we know what that feels like. So, you know, telling our pitchers that and understanding like, Hey, sometimes it's, it's okay to split the plate, you know, after a three or four run inning, if that guy swings, he swings. The odds are he's you know going to be a little tentative or maybe take it. And if he happens to get a hit, so what? No big deal. Okay, we'll go to Jeff. Um, yeah, you know, we, we, we talked to, before the game about low and, and being in the cleanup spot. And I guess he, I guess he did his job. Yeah, yeah. Got a 3-1 hanging breaking ball and hit it in the pool. Um, no, it was – he, <laughs> he, 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 he keeps impressed and just, you know, obviously with his calmness in, in the batter's box and his ability to just, you know, see pitch after pitch after pitch and, and not – you know, he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. Um, you know, and he's got obviously a ton of power. He lined out to short his first bat, you know, came back and he's like kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, oh, well, not much more I can do there. Um, and then he hits a homer and then he gets in the base hit. So, I mean, he's just, he's given us quality at bats. And this is what we saw in spring training. Like I said, the numbers were what they were in spring, but I just know that I trust that that is going to be, you know, over the course of a whole season, that consistency is going to be really good. What, what did you think of Joey's weekend? It was a really good start. Um, you know, I think with, uh, I don't know how many walks to strikeouts, but I think just the way he controlled the strike zone, the quality of the swings, um, even with two strikes, you know, two strike ground ball base hit, uh, line drive, two linears today, you know, almost hit, killed the pitcher in the second one. Um, it, he's just, he's making more contact. He's staying in the strike zone like he has the last couple of years. But I feel like his, you know, his trajectory on his on his batted balls are a little bit lower, uh, which we want him to hit the ball in the air. But when he's hitting line drives like that too, he's dangerous. There's not much of an opposing pitcher. So instead of popping balls up, those balls are in the seats. So he's in a really good spot right now. And I just got to keep him where he's at. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Kennedy. Just kind of going off that about Nate Lowe, you talked all spring about how, how much you trusted him and how good he was going to be, but just did you expect him to be this good this, you know, first weekend? Listen, I think there's going to be runs where guys, you know, listen, if you have, if you're consistently staying in the strike zone and taking quality swings at good pitches, you're going to have your runs where you go off. Like you're going to have runs where you do a lot of damage, depending. This is what we talk about as an offense. We don't know who, who's going to get the pitches down the middle today. We have no idea. Um, all we can all we can trust is that each guy controls the strike zone and takes good swings at good pitches. And if they do that, some days David Dahl is going to get three pitches down the middle that he's going to hit two homers on. Some days Guzzi is going to get a pitch to hit. Like we just don't know, but we have to consistently stay in the strike zone. And if we do that, you know, Nate Lowe does as good a job of that as any. Um, and he's hitting behind Joey, so he's always going to, you know, right now he's going to have guys on base because Joey's getting on base a ton. And it's going to force – the good thing is is if low continues to hit, they're going to be forced to pitch to Joey at some point because they're going to be tired of having, you know, Nate Lowe having three or four RBIs a game. And just the the quality of that bats for your top four hitters, I guess, kind of all Gallo and Lowe seems kind of out of this world first weekend. Yeah, it's, they'd set the tone. And that's, that's obviously, you know, I'm really excited about – you know, those guys at the top because they're setting the tone for the entire lineup and um, everybody on down kind of feeds off of that. And, and it allows us honestly to, to put crooked numbers up on the board, not just one or two, but like three or four in any um, when we get things right. And that's, uh, that's really exciting to have that at the top. Thanks, Woody. Couple more, Alex. Woody, just curious in the uh, sixth inning in going with West Benjamin with the righty, instead of um, having Lyle finish out the inning? Uh, Jordan hadn't been at that many pitches, honestly, um, all spring. So I didn't want to push him too far. And, you know, he hadn't even been in the sixth inning. 
Um, it was kind of a stretch sending him back out there. I know he had a low pitch count, but sometimes it's just getting back up for the inning is the, probably the most important thing. Um, and Jordan had done his part. He, he had done his, you know, Michael Taylor is a, a good matchup for either one of those guys. Um, I didn't mind either way. Um, Benjamin's a, a great matchup for those guys as well with the with the stuff that he has in his mix of pitches. So I, I didn't mind at all. Appreciate it. What do you think you? Uh, back, Devin. If I told you that it, with the end of this weekend, you guys ended up taking more free bases than you gave out, would you take it? Yeah. I mean, I Every prefer, time? I prefer two, win, two or three wins, but. Yeah, I mean, but for yeah. what you're trying to do, would you take that? Absolutely. I mean, it's. It's what we set out to do as a, as a as a team. Like, and I know that the first two games, maybe the first two games were the best thing that happened to our pitcher staff. I hate to say that, but you know, you don't want to give up 24 runs, but or 25, whatever it was. Um, but at the end of the day, like we made the adjustment, and Jordan, you know, got the ship right at the ship, you know, and it, and it proved basically our point of, you know, and some of these guys are going to have to get through the growing pains. You know, younger guys are going to have to get through that and trust that they, they got to throw their pitches over the plate. Um, they have good enough stuff to attack these hitters. And sometimes we give hitters too much credit and listen, those guys battled the first two days. I'm not, I'm not going to take all the credit away from them because they did, they battled us for the first two days. Um, they put some really, really good bats on, um, but that's where we have to be better than that and say, you know, okay, you can battle. We can battle too. We're going to keep attacking you. And, you know, that's obviously what we did today. Okay. Joey's ready.